At last, we've made it to the crown chakra. As we were starting this video, it became clear that the information that was available could not possibly be contained in just one short video. It had to be expanded into several to really do the topic justice. This topic is going to connect everything, everything we've talked about in the past, chakras, dimensions, crystals, sacred geometry, astral travel, heaven and earth. It's one of the most amazing topics. One that if scientifically and spiritually understood will completely change everything. And that's the key. It needs to be understood both scientifically and spiritually, not just one or the other. When both the left and the right brain sync up and understand each other, that is when the true realization hits you and things really start to make a lot of sense, like a light going off in your head. And it's perfect because the topic for these next few videos is light. I also have a special surprise today. Teal Scott is with me and she's going to be helping share some valuable information about light, enlightenment, and vibration. If we look at our ancient history, we can see references to light in almost every ancient culture in a multitude of ways. They don't ever believe light is just some electromagnetic phenomenon of the third dimension, but that light itself is intimately connected to the creation of reality, as well as connected to the center of the toroidal field at the center of your heart. In Egyptian culture, as well as biblical texts, light is the first thing that was created in the creation of everything. As it's often described, God or source, Allah, Brahma, or any of these words for cosmic consciousness is light. Or perhaps that from this consciousness, light is the first thing to emerge. You can think of the vibration of light as being the closest vibration to that of source energy. And this is why in human culture, God and spirit is so often equated to light. We all may be manifested in a dense physical way, but our truer selves are light beings. Based on the thoughts that we hold in our minds, our day-to-day -day choices, and the degree that we limit ourselves to illusion instead of awareness, we either prevent or allow ourselves from becoming a living embodiment of the light being that we are. Over the next few videos, we're gonna talk all about light, visible light, electromagnetic radiation, and spiritual light. And we need to make this distinction right off the bat because visible light is only light that the eye can see. Electromagnetic radiation is all of the particles and waves that make up all of our reality, which are, in essence, very dense particles of light energy that manifest in a multitude of ways. Spiritual light, as I understand it, is the same thing, but on another level higher than that. Spiritual light is the light of awareness, the light of consciousness, and the light within your heart. The first manifestation of the physical dimension is light, the kind of light that the sun projects and the eye perceives. This light most closely matches the frequency of the light that we can call spiritual light. In many cultures, the sun was representative of this understanding. The sun is an excellent example of this. It is the nucleus of our solar system, the bringer of life and light, which was seen as a force akin to God. This is often confused by modern scholars to be some form of sun worship, there's a key difference between what we think is happening and what was actually happening. They didn't worship the sun, they loved it, they understood it. It is their cosmic father, as we've discussed before. The sun is the closest representation we have in this dimension to understanding source energy. Source energy, that which we often call God, is unified potential energy. Being unified and potential energy, this means that in order to know itself, source had to express itself in a way that would enable it to understand separateness and finite properties. And so, all of the dimensions were created. As the dimensions were created, the vibrations and experiences of each one became more and more separate in nature until it arrived at this physical dimension, which is where we currently find ourselves. All around the world, there is an idea that is widely understood known as enlightenment. To be enlightened is to become aware of your spiritual nature to become more aware to a greater understanding of truth. As it's often described, enlightenment is like shining a light on old belief systems that no longer work. Here's an example. On our planet, we had a movement that took place a few hundred years ago called the Industrial Revolution. What happened was that we ultimately became conditioned to a lifestyle where we worked with machines nine to five and basically became slaves to our own system. People stopped doing what they wanted to do 
and started working primarily for money. And maybe we weren't doing exactly what we wanted to before that, and the Industrial Revolution was the creation of something new. It wasn't bad, and what it did was propel us forward technologically. What then happened was our school systems adopted the same system, ultimately to condition our children from a very young age to get into the nine to five system as well. At the time, we thought it was the right thing to do. What we are realizing now is that this system is conditioning us to become cogs in the wheels of our civilization rather than independent creators who are born and taught to go into the world and create something magical. And you can see a difference when kids defy the school system and do what they want. People like Steve Jobs chose to drop out of college and completely transform the way that we use computers forever. And Albert Einstein couldn't sit still in class and ended up revolutionizing the field of physics. So what does this have to do with enlightenment? To become enlightened is to become more aware of what is. And what is, is seeing and understanding the reality as it is. In this particular example, seeing that the current education system and even work system needs to be transmuted into something new, or as we like to say, reformed. So we become enlightened to the truth that our old systems don't work and we'd like to make something new. Perhaps a school system where art and creativity is just as important as the maths and sciences, where kids are given the opportunity to learn about what they want to learn about and grow in a powerful learning environment and create amazing things from a very young age, such as the 13-year-old that revolutionized solar panels by using the Fibonacci sequence. To become more aware takes place on two levels. And what I mean by this is that it takes place internally and externally. The example I just gave you was external, becoming more aware of something that is fundamentally broken that we have created, and then finding new ways to fix it and turn it into something entirely different, and something that works from its core. When you consciously make the choice to seek your true nature, you consciously make the turn back towards source energy. Thus, with spiritual practice, your bodily frequency becomes higher and higher until you physically transcend the third dimension. The highest frequency that a physical thing can maintain without ceasing to exist in the third dimension is light, which is why we call this process enlightenment. Given that, enlightenment internally is where the real magic takes place. Across all of these ancient cultures that describes light and God, Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, and so on, the most consistent factor is that God is within you. God is the light at the center of your heart. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Christ said. And how interesting that the toroidal field pattern that is around all things is the same as the one around your heart. And that the very center of that field is a point of unity which connects you to a higher consciousness of the universe all around you. When we allow ourselves to become a living embodiment of the light being that we are, we become a living embodiment of God consciousness. We become enlightened. So when we become enlightened, as the Buddha did, we essentially become more aware of our divine nature. And by divine, I mean the aspect of you that is eternal, your essence or your spirit. And this can be described scientifically as well. We know that atoms are immortal based on scientific research. Atoms never decompose or age. Atoms that were present at the time of the Big Bang billions of years ago are still with us today in the same form that they were when they came into existence. When two atoms hold hands, they form a molecule the same way when letters come together to form words, and words form together to make sentences. However, the moment that space is introduced, it separates all of the aspects into their basic elements. The meaning of the words and sentences disappear. Nevertheless, the letters still exist. In the word life, the letters are bonded together. If you separate the letters, it becomes a jumble. The word no longer exists, but the letters do, and it works the same way with atoms and molecules. So when atoms stop holding hands, the molecule dies, but the atoms continue to live on. Molecules create physical matter in this dimension, including our physical hearts, livers, brains, bones, and every other aspect of this reality is composed of molecules. When molecules separate and die, our organs deteriorate and age, and the atoms live on and become something new. Light has not only wave-like properties, but also particle-like properties. Particles are in essence an energetic vibration that appears static static meaning unchanging and finite. The properties and behavior of particles is the reason that this physical reality looks static and feels finite and real to you. When we move back towards source, we are moving back towards light because light is the first physical manifestation of source. 
We come through the experience of light when we enter this dimension, and we leave through the experience of light when we die. This is why when people die, they experience moving towards a white light. Keep in mind that nothing really dies, but simply energy is transmuted. The energy that was created between the molecules do not disappear out of existence when something dies. It is simply transmuted. The consciousness moves on. When our physical body dies, our consciousness moves on as well. Our awareness is transmuted and moves into something new. The physical body can decompose, but we don't, we cannot. So let's bring this back around full circle. Light, does light decompose? Is that even remotely possible? Light can bend, dance, shine, and shimmer. And when you break it apart, it becomes color and more finely tuned vibrations. Considering all things are vibration, perhaps the light energy that creates your being too is just a creation of consciousness within a field of possibilities, with you at the very center, sharing space with the rest of the universe. Enlightenment is understanding that you are not your thoughts, but the awareness of the thoughts themselves. Enlightenment is understanding that you have a right to exist because you do exist. And so does everything and everyone else in existence. It is knowing and seeing truth, which is everything that is without any preconceived ideas or stories being put on top of circumstances. Enlightenment is shining your light, sharing your truth, expressing yourself, and consciously participating in reality in your highest way. It is choosing growth over stagnation, even if it causes you discomfort. It is asking questions and questioning the answers and always asking more questions. It's making decisions and then letting go and trusting that decision. It's acknowledging when you've made a mistake and hurt someone or broke something and then cleaning up your mess. It's taking responsibility for yourself in all of your actions. It's also the understanding that you are not alone and that anything is possible. That the kingdom of earth is external to yourself and the kingdom of heaven is internal, the space where everything is connected. <laughs>